Alexander and welcome to Dish About the Dish, where the foods we eat tell the stories of our lives. And today I have a special guest, Tony, who's going to share with us his amazing three-year long journey. So Tony, hello. Thank you so much for joining me this morning. Thanks for having me. So I always like to find out first, what is your most memorable meal? Probably, uh, honestly, like growing up, um, my family, we didn't have a lot of money. So one of the most memorable things and one of those comfort food things for me uh, that like really just kind of takes me back is like chicken and rice, like chicken thighs and rice. It was cheap. It was something that my mom could cook in bulk. She would put Worcestershire sauce in it and onions and peas and all that stuff. And I, I still love it. I mean, it's still one of those things that it just tastes like home, you know. That is so funny you mentioned chicken and rice because that's probably going to come up a lot in this conversation. <laughs> <laughs> uh, because um, I found out about you because you have recently gone or actually you're still endeavoring to go um, on a journey of physical transformation you've recently lost 120 pounds 140, 140 yeah. which is amazing and what is it something that you've always fought with or is it something that had come upon suddenly um where you've reached this point where you're going i have to make a change for my life well i mean i've always been a big guy i was always the big kid you know uh the chubby guy I had you know got the husky pants and the husky clothes as a you know, a, a elementary school and, and uh, middle schooler. Um, and, uh, you know, as I got older, after I, you know, graduated high school and kind of got out on my own, you know, gained a little bit of weight there. Like I think a lot of people do, you know, in college where you're not, you know, your diet isn't really controlled by your, you know, your parents anymore. Um, and, uh, but I mean, as I got older and as I got into, um, you know, just adult life. Uh, I got married and I, I'd struggled with a lot of like emotional, like you know, problems like you know, depression, uh, addiction, things like that. So uh, while I was married, I, I gained a considerable amount of weight. So um, I got up to 380 pounds. And that's the last time I remember, like, that's the highest I ever like got weighed at, at, at the doctor's office. I'm sure I probably got past that. But um, and then you know, I got tired of being miserable. Uh, I was really just, you know, unhappy, uncomfortable all the time and decided to start making a change. And then um, as I was doing that, my my ex-wife, you know, she she didn't really like that. That, that wasn't something that, you know, it was it was kind of something that she didn't want to see, I guess. Uh, and so that was like a catalyst for me to say, okay, well, you know, I'm going to do something for myself. And if you're not along for the ride, that's okay. <laughs> you know, I'll, I'll go on it on my own and I don't, I don't need you to, to allow me to do it. You know, it's, it's my thing. So, and that really, you know, ending that and then coming into like, okay, I, I want to be happier, you know, and I think this is a good way to do it. Um, that was a catalyst for that. Excellent. Was that, this was, um, so the big, so I'm going to Oh, the big change because you don't just lose 140 pounds and hopefully have to do it more than once in your life. Um, but was it the first time you really had tried to lose significant weight? Yeah, uh, you know, when I was when I was younger, when I was in like middle and high school, you know, we would try different diets and stuff. You know, my you know my my whole family is has got you know weight issues, and so my mom would try the different diets and I would kind of go along, but it was never really a concerted effort that was sustained um and i don't think i had the tools at the time to to really do that um i think i had to really want that for myself rather than have somebody else push me to do it um so the big change for me was okay what do i have to do to not be as unhappy as i am and you know not just about the way i looked and the way that i felt but just the way that um the way that my life was going you know so the big change for me was um do you want to keep doing this and the answer was no i don't because <laughs> having gone through this struggle myself currently it's like where do i begin 
Um, and I feel, I felt like you have your highs and your lows and where you, the easy part. So, okay. So, so we all know, cause it's been told time to us time and time again. And it is true, which is you have to lose weight, diet and exercise. <laughs> which part did you find the easier thing to kind of latch onto the diet part or the exercise? Definitely the diet. Um, for me, I mean, it, it has, the diet's been a struggle to a degree. Um, I started off kind of just eating lighter stuff, you know, not eating chicken, bacon, macaroni, and cheese every other day. And, uh, I stopped eating out as much. And then, uh, I found out about keto, which I've been doing. And, uh, I'm not one of those folks that like says it's a, the thing that should work for everybody and you've got to do it. You've got to try it. It'll, it's worked for me. And, um, like I said, I don't, I don't, I don't claim I'm not, I'm not one of these kind of proselytizers, but it's, it's worked for me. It's helped me stay on my plan because it gives me things, you know, I can eat things that are palatable to me that keep me sated and I'm not uh, always hungry. Um, but the diet was definitely the easiest part because I already liked to cook. Uh, and so I knew I could make things that I wanted to eat. That's excellent. Cause I, for me, I found it the opposite. Exercise was easier for me to grasp onto than the diet part. Cause the diet part you go, oh yeah. I, I start out great in the morning. You know, morning is great. My morning snack, lunch is okay. And then by three, four o'clock, that's when everything kind of goes to hell. <laughs> and then it just all kind of comes in. But the exercise parts, like as long as I do that once a day, that's only one day I have to think about it. And then I can keep going. <laughs> The exercise, like regular, consistent exercise is something I only recently added, you know. Um, I was doing some, but really, really inconsistently. Um, and then, you know, my the nature of my job, sometimes I have to work longer hours and, that, you know, and sometimes it's stressful. I work in like a retail customer service type thing. And, um, you know, some of it, you know, I use that as an excuse to be like, oh, I don't really have the energy for it, you know. Uh, so the, getting used to doing the exercise was hardest for me, but, um, it, you know, the, the, the food part, you know, like I said, I love to cook and I, I know I can make something great and something that'll work for my plan. Um, so it's, it was one of those things where, you know, it, it, it was a little bit of a transition, you know, I still have like cravings for the stuff that I don't really, you know, want to put into my diet, but, uh, I give myself that time every every so often. So you mentioned chicken and rice, which is the oh so popular with broccoli, the oh so popular popular diet meal. But that <laughs> was you, you know that was. Up? What's that? How do you mix that up? Well, I don't really eat chicken and rice anywhere. You know, keto. <laughs> you don't really eat that many carbohydrates with rice. Um, what I you know mainly what I've been trying to focus on, uh, especially lately, like at first. You know, it was, I would eat whatever would fit into that window, you know, whatever I could track and say, okay, this fits. Um, in the last year or so, I've been trying to eat more um, whole food type things, less packaged food. Like I, I don't completely stay away from packaged food, but uh, you know, my goal is if I'm going to have a meal, you know, that meal is gonna be a relatively fatty protein and some sort of vegetable that's friendly to what I'm, you know, what'll meet my macros. Um, so I don't really eat a lot of rice anymore, but you know, I, I do enjoy chicken. I mean, I, I love beef. I love uh, pork, fish. I've been eating a lot of fish lately. <laughs> it's just, uh, fish is great. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's good for you. A lot of smoked salmon. I love smoked salmon. Um, I barbecue, I, I have a smoker that I got last year. So um, those kinds of things. And just, you know, the, the, the way that this particular, you know, regimen, works for me it kind of keeps me from overeating too much even if I wanted to you know I'm, I mean I do kind of still keep an eye on my calorie uh, intake uh, but right now it's because I have specific goals that I'm trying to reach uh, when I wasn't you know when my goal was just lose weight and yeah. you know and not have any kind of like trackable thing it was just like okay I'll just eat this and it was fine you know so how long has been your journey since you started uh, it's going on just about three years. Three years. So, um, you know, I, I, the the first year I lost 80 pounds pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. um, and then I kind of went off my 
plan and stopped really, really trying very hard. Mm -hmm. um, and then I found that every day, like I, there's a bakery that I pass by every day on the way to work and I would stop in and buy a donut or two every morning. And and then I started, my to my clothes started getting tight again. I was like, mm, nah, I don't want to do this anymore. Let's so uh, that got me to think, think a little bit more about long-term goals and where I really wanted to be and uh, how to get there. And then, um, you know, last year I decided that I would take, I would commit to doing my plan for a hundred days at a time. Like I take a hundred days and do it every day consistently. And then I give myself four days off and then try it again, start again from another hundred days. Right now I'm, I'm on day, I think 32, I think of my third hundred day round. And then, um, you know, on, on this particular round, I, I started adding in Okay, I'm going to commit to 30 minutes daily without fail, without skipping, without making an excuse. I'm tired. I don't feel like it every day, at least 30 minutes of some sort of exercise. It doesn't have to be amazing. You know, it doesn't have to be the workout that wears you out, uh, but 30 minutes at least of something. Weights, walking, core, you know, that kind of stuff. So that's how I've kind of approached it in the last year or so. And it seems to be working. Uh, pretty well and it, it I'm a lot happier too I mean I, I have consistent better moods better sleep um, you know I, I'm a little bit I mean I've always been an easygoing person but I, I'm a little less stressed I think that's that's excellent and you know they always say every morning you can start again but you've also built a now another trigger which is every 100 days you can start again if, yeah, <laughs> if you absolutely. have to and, you know, it gives me, you know, when I, you know, things that I crave that aren't on my, my journey or my path or it within the plan, those, that's the time I can say, okay, this is, the, I get those things that I've been thinking about. I even plan it out. I'm like, okay, on Friday, I'm going to have biscuits and gravy and hash browns. And then, uh, you know, for, for dinner, I'm going to have, you know, a scallion pancake and some Chinese food, you know, and then, uh, like I said, and once that's over, you know, it's back to it, um, and it's it's working pretty well. I, I feel good about it, you know. Balance is everything. It's underrated, but balance is everything. <laughs> and and you know, I, I've I've even you know been able to kind of take that idea and you know share it with some of my family. You know, some of my family. We have a, a, a text thread where you know I said, hey, how do you guys feel about you know committing to do something? For a hundred days solid of self-improvement, doesn't matter what it is. It can be exercise, it can be diet, it can be, you know, uh, one of my aunts has decided to declutter. Uh, she's got a lot of stuff that she does, you know, and and one thing every day, um, and do it every day, you know, for a hundred days and see how you feel afterwards. And we we check in every day. We we talk about struggles. We talk about you know the the things that are that we're celebrating, um, and you know it's it's a good feeling. Then it's good to have that support. And it's good to have that um, that kind of uh, you know I feel like uh, I'm doing something to help people I care about too. So excellent. Well, thank you so much for sharing your journey with us, um, and that it's and we hope you luck as you continue to go because um, it's unfortunately one of those things where it's yay good on you. Now do it for the rest of your life. <laughs> but. Um, you know and I wish you continued success too. Uh, you know, I, I know that it's uh, it's never as easy as people make it sound, but it, it's also I think it's not as hard as we put in our minds uh, before we start. So uh, I wish you the best, and uh, thank you for uh, for taking the time. And thank you for sharing your journey. I want to say thank you again to Tony for sharing with us his amazing journey. And again, we do wish him good luck on his future endeavors. Now, if you're experiencing something similar, if you have any tips and tricks on your own health journey you want to share, give us a little like and a comment down below. We would love to hear your thoughts and hopefully we'll see you again. So until next time, y'all.